Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the 7th episode of Most Attacking Chess Game. Whether you are beginner or the title player, these games will teach and taste your attacking as well as tactical skills. Throughout the video, at certain point, I am going to ask you to pause the video and find out the best move in the position. If your move match with the move played in the game or even the best move in the position, then you have to score 10 points. Otherwise, you will score only 0 point. At the end, we are going to sum up your points and that will tell you the story where exactly your tactical skill lies. The game I have picked is a tribute to the Grandmaster Timur Garev, who has recently created a world record by playing blindfold against 48 player. The good point is he scored 38.5 out of 48 games which is more than 80% ratio. Mark Asselman, who is white in this position, start with the move d4 and Garev responded with the move d5 and after the move c4, we have e6. So the queen's gambit declined. White continue here with the move knight to c3. Now, as per the situation, the most frequently moves played over here are knight to f6 leading to the queen's gambit decline and also c6 which leads to the semi slav defense. But Grandmaster was in really attacking mode and he played one of the most aggressive setup starting with the move c5. This is known as Tarash defense. Here the mainline continue with the move c captures d5. Now the proper Tarash move over here is e captures d5 which leads to some isolated queen pawn but in return black get tremendous activity. Instead of all this, Garev choose a gambit line and here he capture the d4 pawn. Attacking the knight, white of course take this pawn and now comes knight to c6 attacking the queen, queen to d1 and after pawn captures, kindly note knight captures d5 is not a good move over here. So the best move as per the theory is queen captures d5, afterwards black continue here with the move bishop to d7. Personally, in the whole d4 complex, I think this gambit, which is known as Von Henning Shara gambit, is the most aggressive one. And there are many games where black crushes white within 25 or 30 moves. So if you are looking for an alternative, which will give you a very attacking game, then I think this gambit is a very good choice for you. Now the main move over here is knight to f3, but in this game, White decided to surprise his opponent and he played the move bishop to d2. No matter, black continue here with the move knight to f6. And once again, if white wants to play a very safe game, then he can play queen to b3 or queen to d3, which is less riskier than actually played in the game that is queen to g5. I guess the only reason why Asselman played the move queen to g5 because he want to take his grandmaster opponent out of the theory book and create a complex game where white has all the chances. Now black who so far played in a true gambit style continue his attacking style and offered another pawn with the move bishop to e7. White took the challenge so he captured the g7 pawn. So you can already see that black pawn structures are completely ruined and on top of everything, white is a clear two pawn up. But this is the idea of this gambit. If you carefully look at the white position, white king side position is completely blocked up. So it will take a hell lot of time to take those pieces in the game. Here black continue with his energetic style with the move rook to g8 attacking the queen, queen to h6 and now queen join into the party with the move queen to b6 attacking b2. Here white played the obvious move which he was aiming for that is queenside castle defending the b2 and now we reach to the first critical position. Kindly pause the video and find out what is the best move in this position. 
Okay, I hope you find this wonderful move, castle on the queen side. So Grandmaster is wasting no time in peace development and he wants to attack white king as quickly as possible. Now instead of castle, you might think, hang on, can't we take this f2 pawn which is already a loose? Well, first thing you should know that whenever you are playing a gambit, you are not playing for equalizing the material or giving back the initiative. And that is the clear case over here because queen to f2 allows white to develop his piece with the move knight to f3 and now not only that queen is misplaced but that will give all the time to the white to develop his king side pieces. Same goes for the move knight to g4 as it looks very attractive as it is attacking queen and attacking f2 but after white's next reply that is queen captures h7 grabbing the third pawn and attacking the rook and here the best reply for the black is to castle on the queen side and after the move knight to h3 not only white defend everything but i don't think so black has enough compensation for his lost pawns so that's why as for the scenario castle is the best move in this position now indeed black is threatening the move knight to g4 so white has to stop it and in fact he did with the move f3 so not only stopping knight intrusion but white is planning to play the move e4 and liberate his king side pieces okay black continue here with the move bishop to e6 not only opening the d file for the rook but those monster bishops are looking at white queen side white continue as we expected he played the move e4 and we reach to the second important point of the game where you have to decide what you are going to do next Well, congratulations if you find this move that is knight to e5. So not only black centralized that knight, but that knight is coming quickly on the queen side. Now, this is not the best move in the game. The best move in the game is rook to g6, which believe it or not, wins a piece because after queen to e3 and bishop to c5, black wins a piece for the two pawn and this position is advantageous to the black. Nevertheless, knight to e5 has its own venom. Here, white continue with the move knight to h3. And now, this is the most important point of the game because as white has the only one bishop to develop and he's on the verge of consolidating his position, so as a black, you have to find some concrete attacking blow. Kindly take as much as your time and find out the only move which gives black and advantage is position. Are you ready? Have you seen this move? Shakalaka, boom, boom. <laughs> well, personally, when I gone through this game, I didn't find that move. What a wonderful move to play in the game. First important point, white cannot take this rook. The simple reason is after knight check, white king is going to be checkmated. And if white cannot take the rook, then that means that black rook is posted on the seventh rank. And now black can create some very concrete threats over here. After a long thing, white continue here with the move king to b1. So his idea is that now knight to d3 is not a check. And maybe in some line, white can capture back that rook. So now ball is in your court. How are you going to respond to this move? Well, you are really a super attacking chess player if you find this move that is knight captures e4, bam! Now, in order to understand this move, the first thing you need to notice is before knight captures e4, there is an x-ray on this loose queen. So that means if you can get rid of this two piece, then white is in severe danger. Surprisingly enough, black has two pieces hanging but there is only one more order which keep white in the game, which in fact, Asselman didn't find it. Now, before I move on, what I like you to do is, you need to calculate all the variation from the black perspective, what happens after knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and bishop captures rook. And I'll give you a guarantee that you will be thrilled by the black options. 
Before we start, there's one thing I like to mention over here that instead of knight captures e4, which is a human move, computer suggests that knight to d3 is even better. But in the game, it is very hard to see what exactly going on in the position. However, if you find this move, congratulations, you can also score full points. Let's see the fascinating move, knight captures e4. Now the first point you should notice is when white captures this knight with his own knight, then black will continue here with the move, rook g captures d2, so destroying the defender of the queen. For example, if white capture with the knight or the rook, so let's say knight captures d2, then bishop to f5 will nab the queen. If rook captures d2, then after bishop captures a2 check, once again white will lose his queen. So the only good move over here is queen captures d2. But then after rook captures, rook captures and queen to a5. Although material is balanced over here, that is let's say white has two rook for the queen. But the problem over here for the white perspective is this king's side pieces are pathetically placed. And that will give all the time for the black to arrange his attack on the king's side. Okay, so it turns out that knight captures e4 is a disaster zone for the white. So how about if we capture with the f pawn? Well here, the move is very obvious. You have to destroy the defender of the queen, that is rook g captures d2. And now if white capture with the rook, then after bishop captures a2, white will simply lose a queen. So that's not good. So accordingly, queen captures d2 is forced. Afterwards, we are going to take with the rook and after rook takes, we pretty much reach to the same position which we have seen in the last knight captures e4 line. The only difference over here that white knight is sitting on c3 where it is well protecting the a2 and that's why this position only give slight advantage to the black. In fact, this is what white should have done in the game. In the game, white decided to go for the third option that is bishop captures g2 but this is just asking for it. Final move of the game and what it is you need to find out. Well here black played a simple but very effective move. Knight captures c3 and white simply resigned. What a miniature by Guerrero. Just in 17 moves, a player strength of international master has been completely crushed. Now, in case if you are wondering why white resigned, here are the few lines. If white captured this knight, then the simplest is, you first of all take this rook with a check, and after rook takes, we have bishop to f5, which nabbing the white queen, so that's not good. And instead of capturing the knight, if white king try to run away, for example, king to a1, then black get winning attack after knight captures, rook captures, knight to c4, attacking two spots. And after queen to g7, defending the b2, black has this effective move, f6, which will allow black to execute his attack very, very smoothly. Black can give this one check, that is queen check, but after bishop to d8, in fact, there is no escape. Okay, so it's time to sum up your points and find out what is your score out of 50 points. Well, if you are scoring 40 or more than that, then congratulations, your tactical skills are very sharp and you are just thinking like a grandmaster. If you are scoring 30, then there are a few tactical aspects you are missing in your game, which you just need to work on it. But if you are scoring 20 or less than that, then you seriously need to improve your tactical check skills and that means you need to see more of this kind of attacking chess games. Well, I hope you enjoy and learn this wonderful attacking chess game. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on my video and I will meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay. A3, B4, gaining space on the queen side. 
So that is one plan, and the second plan is 